My name is Pierre Alexandre Tremblay, for those of you who don't know me, or PA for the others. Um, have you helped yourself with this? It's very, it seems like teaching. I'm on sabbatical, I shouldn't teach. Is the recording started? Yes, sir. Lovely. Thanks, Oli. Thanks, Alex. Hello, by the way. Five speakers today, two from Huddersfield, one ex Huddersfield, which has betrayed us for York. One ex beastie who has betrayed them for York, and one newly appointed. Is it official? Or should, I shouldn't say it on the camera. Um, I don't mind. You might as well. <laughs> so a newly appointed lecturer. I don't even know where, but yes, he's with us today, which is the most important part. And Huddersfield has given us a sunny blink. And I enjoy that because that doesn't happen too often. But you're British, so you know it doesn't work. work like the weather doesn't work in this country. So for those who don't know, I'm in sabbatical right now, enjoying south of Portugal, the shore. I'm working really, really hard by the shore. And it's 15 to 20 degrees every day, sun, bicycles. So I really miss the British weather. Um, <laughs> tonight we have a good show. Okay, sorry. Welcome. Max MSP Nerd Talk. It's just very informal, so if you think I'm, I'm, I'm too relaxed, I'm sorry, just drink more coffee. Um, I'm going to talk about... Sandbox number three. Sandbox number three is the third instance of my base and laptop performances. And what's interesting with it is not necessarily that I perform or what I do with it, but why I did it and what's the engine under it. And that's what makes it nerd stock. So uh, to hear a performance of Sandbox number three, you might have to listen to Tomorrow, tomorrow Night's opening act that I do with Monty or if I don't play it that time, maybe next year. So the point of, of that instrument, for those who don't know the Sandbox series, I'm alone with the bass and the laptop. No preparation, it's a Sandbox, so I just build an instrument in which I come and play, an environment in which I do play. I'm an improviser, I've been improvising professionally for too long now, I'm getting old. And the whole point is to master the instrument towards transparency, like any other instruments except the laptop do. Except those are bullshit, but that's not the, the subject of today. So the first one is loop based. You've got, I could actually turn them on because I need to show you some stuff. So first sandbox is uh, loop based, quite simple. And uh, when it turns on, it's a great machine. <laughs> <laughs> in French it says that Max has hanged. It's good because my talk is going to be on, online for the Max community to see, so they can see that Max does hang, yes. Cycling. Help. You so, want the projector um, up here? Sorry? Do you want the projector? Did you sabotage your attention? Did you sabotage? Oh, that's not my machine. No, no it's stuck. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed, and thank you, Scott, for pointing. So one person is paying attention here. Um, can I have the projector, please? Three, two, one. It's long enough. You. So sandbox number one, the principle, I'm there, I feed the machine with lots of loopers. It's just a looping machine. Um, so my bass enters somewhere here. All these are different loopers, a spectral bass looper, two time bass, like time re loopers are, could be sample accurate if you're anal enough. Uh, that's something always funny, by the way. You see that on the list. Can I have sample accurate loopers? And every time I think I'm, <laughs> I've been rap producer in my life. I've recorded lots of musicians. And you know, when you get a musician that is tight within a couple of milliseconds, you call that bloody tight. A sample is a fifth of a millisecond at the lowest resolution. Anyway, so uh, yes, they will offset over 25 years. Um, but yes, max timing is shitty. You can see that it's really trendy. It shows like you've got very good rhythmic air. I was paid to groove, so I don't know what time is, obviously. So um, this is a, a dirty looper, which is uh, like to emulate like a boss thing. I had to call an external for that. Because you know, we're nerd talk, we can't talk. There's no way in Max MSP to do downsampling and resampling. You know when you have a boss pedal, 
you record that two second delay and then and you put the delay at four seconds and dirty grainy thing and then you record above it and do and then you bring it back and the first thing is at the same thing and then the other thing has gone an octave up you know what i mean you offset the only thing the way they do that is they just change the frequency of the you know the sampling frequency at read and write in max you can't do that so I had to do some kind of, if you do that with like the a, a feedback delay, when you do it will record that in the feedback loop, so you can't do that. And if you do that with uh, buffer writing, you'll skip, when you go faster than real time, you skip indexes, and these indexes will be empty, therefore, or fill with whatever passed in last time. And then when you synchronize at the right speed, you might, you know, if you're twice as fast as reality, you will have every other sample that is empty. When you come back, if you're not lucky, you're on the silent one and there's no sound. Or if you go much faster than reality, which is what you do usually when you perform, you don't look at them exactly two times, you'll skip samples all over the place and then you become very shitty results. So what I did is the iPoke object, available for me. So you can just, it's like poke, but you write, it, when it skips a sample, it, it fills the, set, the buffer. So that's this one. If I've lost you already, I'm sorry, but if you can't cover that, FTM will be very hard for you later. So um, this is um, a kind of granular buffer filler with attack detection. So it fills a, a, a grain per attack, which is kind of sexy. And then you've got two files player. And then they all go in the kind of mixing strip, which is basic sexy stuff like distortion, dirt, bandpass filter, amplitude modulation, and then a variable delay, doesn't have to be variable, panning. So you can do, and then you can feed that back into recording anything or feed that back into keying some gates. And so that's, but as you can see, it's very versatile. It has a MIDI learn, which was my five second glory on the max list. You know, with pat, patch attribute, you can listen to, you've got pat, pat storage, patch attribute storage object. You actually can monitor what's coming, what's manipulated in real time. So if you link that with a MIDI message that comes in, just the header of the MIDI message, you can actually map that and then resend that with patcher forward, patcher forward. So you can do a MIDI learn very cleverly with all these. There's about 600 parameters, but in, in real time I can map. But now back to the. All of this is a context to explain why I'm going to sandbox number three. So. You can imagine, I'm with my bass, I've got two hands on the bass, two foot on pedals, and then I'm playing, and I say, oh, I want to loop something. I've got a pedal to start a looper, good. And it was, I want to stop it. Okay, I want to mix it now. Oops. Okay, I'll mix what I'm, I'm loop what I'm doing right now on another looper. Okay, I can stop that, and then I start to mix. So, you can see there's a latency in the performing with the bass, which is full bodied already, and this machine and that machine. Now, the clever in you will say, oh yeah, PA, why don't you put sensors on your base? I'm allergic to sensors. I'm allergic to new technology for two reasons. A, it breaks all the time. B, it's custom, which implies that when I'm touring, which I do, less now because I'm an academic, but still, when I'm touring, I need something like this. Have you seen this? The patine on this, you know, it's been grinded by airport. It's been, you know, reality on tour means that stuff will break. If you've got custom stuff, you better have three instances of each. Which reminds me when I was a technical director and IRCAM came to Montreal, they came with three next machine because they couldn't afford one to break. They just need one in the concert, but they tour with three next machine. They tour with six engineers. Now, I haven't got that budget. So I need my stuff to work. And if it doesn't work, I need to be able to call and say, I need a USB fader box, please, now. Clack. And I get one, and the show must go on, and it goes. So, sensors pisses me off. A third reason is that you need to learn to play with them. I've practiced about 12,000 hours on the bass to try to make it happen. There's no bloody well spend 12,000 hours on a new interface. No, thank you very much. So, that's all very important. I'm not bragging, I'm just putting the setting the scene. So all of this slowness, this inertia of dancing with my instrument and ah, doing that, ah, that, ah, slow piece. 
Sandbox number one is usually kind of droney when I perform it in solo. So I say, I need something sexier. You know, I want to pick up girls and stuff like this. So I it needs to be quick because I'm married. So it needs to be just <laughs> so um, sandbox number two came with another kind of approach to the system. And sandbox number three is built on the insatisfaction of the first two. So I'm just anchoring the thing. What time is it? Oh, I'm perfectly perfect. On that. If Max behaves. Hello. Ah, here we go. So, one of the things that you, you, when you improvise with others and you're with yourself, is sometimes you say, when you're a proper instrumental improviser within the post free jazz tradition, is you've trained your ears, and these are the main tools of your improvisation. This, or this, or this, is just a tool. And these are the judge, and usually what's between that. And when the sax player does this kind of, yeah, you say, oh yeah, yeah, on the bass. You can do that. You can react. Oh, he does. Wee, wee, wee. You can do. You can react. Now, laptopists in general, not to say all of them, except very few exceptions, are usually like, yes, I've done that set, and I'll impro improvise with you. And they stick to what they've done. And then you say, hello, hello, music has gone that way. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and try to make sense of where we are at. Like, music has evolved seven ideas by the time they cope with the second one. That is unacceptable for a professional improviser. So, I decided to have these, which just records the last five minutes of music. So, if something's good in the five past minutes, it's just a copy, crack, copy, paste, in another buffer. And then I can granulate it, or I can send it into a piece of crap. But it's just a simple timeline that records, a bit like um, Cassidy's stuff, you know, a long timeline, and then I can send it. Another problem in Max, you can't copy buffers without resetting the buffer, so there's another object you do, I, it's just buffer copy, which just happens a chunk of data to an existing buffer without resizing, without refreshing the stuff. Hello? Uh, it's just my show you miss, you know it anyway. So, um, but the key element was Quickness, you know, reactivity. In the first, so I just said, okay, let's do all these things. I can do a preset and another preset, and with a pedal, I can just interpolate, use again patch attributes interpolation mechanism, just to interpolate between a very complex scene and another very complex scene. And I can record presets like by just shift one, shift two, shift three, and then if I press one, two, or three, it goes back. But a bit more clever than that. If I press shift 3, it records 3, but if I want to go to 3, I just have to click 2 times 3. And if I click 2 times 3 at this piece, ta, ta, 3 will be there. It will be the third instance. So I can do long crossfade by just doing, let's go to 1. And now, and that gives a timeline, and then it goes slowly to 1. It's kind of very clever. So it, it, it does work really well. Another thing I wanted to be quick, so I just had fiddle analysis into some parameters like pitch tendencies, amplitude tendencies, um, noisy tendencies, and the kind of rate of attack. Just kind of rough analysis of the stream. And that can be patched to any of it and you can scale it. And I just say, oh, that's again very clever. And the patching is all, is all is all saved in the preferences, so you can interpolate with that. But, this sounded sexy. You know, the analysis of the stream that could do something. So, I said, yeah, let's do something with that a bit more. And then I was in ICMC, and I heard of concatenative synthesis. So that's today's talk. Do you all know what it is? Who doesn't know what concatenative synthesis is? Okay, let's talk, let's talk about that. So, granulation. You take a grain, or a single, you cut it in small bits, and you, by parameters, resynthesize by deciding I'll do clusters of that zone, or pitch shift that way, and stuff like this. Concatenative sy synthesis is meant to corpus-based concatenative synthesis. Okay, We need to take a sound, and we chop it. You can define different ways of chopping that sound. You make grains. And these grains, you analyze them on MPEG-7 descriptors. 
Uh, you've got, I think the last time I read is 125 different descriptors in MPEG-7, but you don't need to use all of them. So that's where I'll, that's where I'll load cat-eyed. Um, you, each grain will be analyzed and given a value on these descriptors. And after that, you can navigate your corpus, your ensemble of grains, by choosing which parameter you find important. Now, there are different ways of doing that. I'll show you the main way. That is the, the, the main, I would say one of the most interesting one, a free one that you can download, you can experiment with that. And that's the set of tools I've used to build sandbox number three. So you need to understand what I'm doing right now and you'll understand where sandbox number three is going. So the genius behind that is called Diemo Schwartz. He's Mr. Concatenative Synthesis at IRCAM. What I didn't say about these grains, so imagine that you have this space. No, I'll, I'll show you the space first. So without going to the nitty gritty details yet, I've got a space here and I've put sounds in it. The Max MSP sounds better. Let's do that. It should take, we should have like a spinning wheel of death or something like this. So, now, if I'm plugging, you should hear something. What have I not done again? Okay, so I don't use that thing often, but we will make it work. Oh, Max crashed, so maybe this is not behaving. Let's re-init the thing. Let's import Apple Sound. Let's turn it on. Let's choose this. Here we go. So, in that case, the, these are the Mac sounds that you all have on your Mac. Those who have PCs, I'm sorry for you. So, um, what you do is that you have all these parameters, these, um, these descriptors, all of these. So you've got the unit ID, which is not important, the order, blah, blah, blah. Let's go to the interesting one, which here, the start from the beginning of the sample, for instance, um, the duration of the actual grain, the pitch of the grain, or its medial number, the loudness, its periodicity, the spectral flatness of the spectral analysis of that grain, the spectral centroid, which is usually used to classify the brightness of sound, um, high frequency energy, mid frequency energy, low frequency energy. You can imagine the bass drum is there and the hi hat would be three different places in that world. You can have also AC1, which is a way of describing. Uh, the spectra again, if I remember well. Energy is, if I remember well, calculating according to psychoacoustic law of how you perceive the energy, and uh, you can pick a, an actual label. But what's great about the architecture is that uh, is just a set of 24 of them, but you've got lots of different sets of descriptors, and I'll talk about that a bit later. But in that case, I can put, for instance, the pitch on the x axis, so this is the y. So let's put like, let's do the piano thing. So let's put the loudness on that axis. So here it's louder. Oops. Hello. And this is, this is softer. And then let's put the pitch in the other dimension. Go to hell. The pitch in the other dimension. So this is lower and this is higher in pitch. You follow me? So you can navigate your grain, you can, you can navigate your corpus and do some granulation effect, though no, that is quite basic, with, I'm just trying to do something like this, to behave. That's catastrophic. Maximus P looms. So anyway, you... You can import your own sound in there. That's what I've done, obviously, to play sandbox. 
but you can define a set of grains, a corpus, with its parameter. Now, imagine that if you've got a set of grain that is describing, I don't know what you've played with a can, and then you, you have a set of grains that describe in time what your, you know, a, a, a speech. You know a multidimensional representation of the stream of the speech, and then you can do mapping. That's what concatenative synthesis is. You can map a grain of a certain corpus into another corpus. It's called also audio mosaicing. You know the mosaics when you take lots of small bits of color to create a bigger image? It's the same thing. You would take like my speech and you would take an analysis of the grains that is cutting my speech audio stream and you would bring that set of parameters and find in the world of your other corpus which grain fits the better. And by concatenating them, by putting them one after the other, you would create a stream that is roughly vocal-like. Now, that is exciting. Back to sandbox number two, my kind of control of the, the stuff. Now, I could have, if I wanted, 25 parameters controlling my cans out of my base. That was the simple aspect of it. So I'll give you a little demo now just playing the bass, and then I'll explain you how it works under the hood till I'm running out of time. Because that could take a lot of time. So I'll just give you the basic elements. But when you download Qatar, this application that you see there, you drag here some sound files, can be a full folder of them, and then you, it will load and load and load and load and analyze the way you want it. It could cut the, the thing by pitch difference, it could cut by attack detection, it could cut by length, fixed length of grain, it could take all files as grain, it could do whatever you want, and then it will appear in that wonderful two-dimension world. You decide which parameters you use and you surf it. It's two-dimensional. What I want to do with the base is at least four dimension. You know, you want to, the, 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 the timbral aspect of my performance, the pitch, the volume, that's already three. Let's go with three first, and I'll, I'll play them to you and you'll see. And I'll limit that to only two parameters and you'll see how it works and you'll see the limits of the system. <coughs> so I was excited. Now I say, wow, how do I do that? He said, oh, it's easy. It's easy. You download Qatar and you see there are ELF files. They should be called, sorry, DMO. <laughs> they should be called un-ELF files. Without, without DMO's help, to, it, it is quite substantial to, to, to understand how Qatar works. But I'll show you. I'll give you a hint or two. And then you go on the FTM list and you ask your questions and people are very responsive. So, let's, let's load the heaviest max patch I've ever seen. It's not loading audio and it will take 20 seconds to load on that machine or something like this. There is. So, what I've decided to do is to have the base stream analyzed in grains of fixed length. You would say, why didn't you choose attack? And you could also ask, why didn't you choose pitch? Now, the, perf the, the answer is quite simple. If I choose attack to cut my, in my coming, incoming signal, I'll always be one grain late. I'll always be one note late. Because if it spits the analysis on the attack, it spits the previous attack. Ping, dong, ping, dong, ding, ding. Imagine pisses me off, okay? So that's not possible. So fixed grain length. If I was using the pitch and I was doing a trill on the same note, it doesn't work. So I went for the straightforward time frame analysis. Now that induces a lag, but it's a fixed lag, which any performer can learn to play with. Now why am I using the electric bass? Because there's no bass sound coming out. So the bass is actually performing the corpus and not performing the bass. But I, as a performer, can translate quite easily and quite sensually. You kind of start to play, and then you'll see I'm, I'm, I've got so much fun with it. You, you start to play with the thing, it's just like, hey, that's fun. So I decided to have three corpuses, you know, the real thing, three corpora. Three corpora of, 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 of sound available to my performance. So. 
again, in a very parallel way, this is the, the world of sandbox number three. You're actually the first one to see it. It's been performed in concert, but they never saw the patch. They just saw a guy playing the bass and hearing the can. So it's three times the same instance of deciding where you play, where, where, which corpus you will uh, um, address. The list of different elements I've got access to, the, the, the descriptors I've got in my corpus, which one I want to use. In Qatar, you can weight the, the different one, and you'll see that's one thing I'll go through. You can weight the different elements that you decide to use uh, to uh, do the matching, the mosaicing, and you will see that changes a lot in the performance. And it tells me as a performer also, what do I listen to when I play the bass? It's very, very useful as a tool to learn on your own practice. And then I've created a, if we've got time, I'll talk about FTM. I've created an FTM looper. So instead of looping the audio, I'm looping the stream of control. So if you think about it, if I loop the stream of control, I'm ahead enough in the stream of control to be able to change the mapping, even change the corpus in which a given sentence that is recorded will be played. I'll show you that in a minute. And I've got three of them, and then I go into my usual distortion, gate, dirt, and filter, because electroacoustic needs these bins. You know, like I'm hearing something narrow, and my corpus is wide, I can just narrow it. You know, like it's just musical chip chops. And uh, it goes into reverb if you want. So I'll just set it. And I'll just give you an example with a couple of chord flora. And um, obviously, it won't be really musical, it will be more demonstrative. But that should uh, give us a, a hint. It might take me about. I can take questions when I'm doing that, actually. If you have any questions so far, before I start to talk about the coding of it. No? Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Uh, this parameters you are talking about, you said something about MPEG-7? Yes, MPEG-7. Is it like a standard? It, uh, standard is a big word, but yes, the, I think there is there is this convention around MPEG-7 that has defined, but I, I couldn't find the list anywhere. There's a... Um, Thank you, Alec. Uh, I can't remember, the ACAM did a big research paper on it, and they had With a project. Karma. The, um, the two brains behind that are the, the, the Stanford people in IRCAM. Cicada or Cicada's project. I can't remember the name mm. of the project, but there was a big project and they outlined a potential something like 130 descriptors. Yeah, so that's it. About 20 of them are useful <laughs> for, for this kind of thing. Don't be snub, <laughs> Alex. No, 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 they're just a lot of them are just not that useful. But the MPEG-7 thing is more generalized because it's also people who are interested in, um, for instance, being able to identify the genre of a piece of music. So it's through analysis. So it has so some commercial uh, applications. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's what the impact of the thing is about. Yes, it was. It you know, there's a lot of money in in, in music information retrieval mm. to understand who's. Okay, just to give you an idea, where the money comes from. Some people have the the, the gift of always finding what's going to be a number one like six to ten weeks before everyone. You know, like some people have that luck, and if you take everyone in parallel on the web to see the trend, you will be able to understand beforehand what makes a hit. So they are trying to track who's listened to pieces beforehand, so therefore they can know what's going to be the next best this hit and sign them before they become a hit and make more money. So you know, this industry is dying, so they find really dirty ways of staying alive, uh, as the song says. So now we should hit bass. Ah, lovely. So that's the only time you hear bass. So now we should hear this. So now I'm playing a corpus of of um, of uh, bell sounds. It's a bit slow. Oh yes, because my analysis is in quarter of a second. So when you start to play, you start. So when I when I do this on the bass, you can hear the distortion. That's a technique that you, you learn to play on the bass compared to that. 
And then if I do the same kind of timbral variation, it's not just the volume that is changing, you've got also the color of my can that I'm playing that is changing. Now the pitch is not, if I change this, I'll just put both together. And I'll lower the depth. You can see the pitch is not tracking that much. Why? Because right now what I've done is to set these three descriptors equal power in my grain replacement. Now let's do something sexy. Let's just record a sentence. Something like... Uh, and then play back. So, so now it's, it's, playing, it's playing back the control stream. And I could obviously change that speed, make it faster or slower. I can loop it if I want, which would be clever. But you can recognize all the sentence I give him. But now it's a bit granular, it's a bit I took like I took a tax based sound. But now we can play with the mapping of the things. So let's put all the emphasis on the note. It's the same sentence, but it doesn't play the same. If I put just on loudness, it doesn't have any link with what I've played, but the curve of energy. And if I put periodicity, it's just the noisiness of my signal that is going to be tracked and replaced. Now, that's all a bit cheeky. It all sounds like, like cheap granulation. But when you start to add the three of them, you put loudness quite an important thing, and no number, you start to, to be able to find a bit more playable stuff. Same note again. That corpus is poor in notes. But if I know that, I can start to play with harmonics, and then... Then, with, as an improviser, you start to play with that, and then off you go. Now, let's record another sentence. Translates to another chord. So you keep the overall kind of timbral shape. Now, those of you who are who haven't been lost yet uh, will understand that the richest the corpus. If I had an infinitely rich corpus. What would it sound like? Okay. It would sound like the input. Because I would map, it would always be a grain that would fit exactly what the input is giving. You agree with me? Now, the strength of that thing is that you can add like gazillions of grains. You can feed in your, in your corpus the richness you want to have when you perform with it. So if for me pitch is very important, I just have to take an example bank and place like chromatic scale into it and then off you go and I've got all my notes it will sound like cheesy pan flute on the bass and off or cheesy whatever you want you know what I mean <laughs> by this by deciding which elements you map as a performer you can decide what's important for you at that given moment and by doing no problem pre-analysis that you say if you have your copper on your hard drive you can load stuff dynamically while you perform and just decide, yes, that's what I want to play. Here we go. A bit like an organ, all the stops of an organ. That would be equivalent, I would say. But the great thing is that you can do alternate techniques. I get my Evo out, I get sustaining notes, I can play with pitch, I can 
depending which corpus I have, this one is a bit like strange. But. <laughs> Again, I've got just one note based element, so I'm, 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 if, I do, if I do a slide, you get the other, you don't get much pitch accuracy, but I've got an organ uh, somewhere that I could show you, which works on the notes, but it's a bit boring, I have to say. Um, so now, that's good one. Very subtle level of, of granulation. And I think it So, what time is it? Yeah, I've got one more minute. Um, the different, the, 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 there are two difficulties that we had to, to, to map. Again, if you understand the principle of grain replacement, one to one mapping of complex parameters, if I had an infinite corpus, it would sound like the input. I don't have an infinite corpus. So the bass fundamental is about 29 hertz on the five on the six string with the, the, the big B. And the highest I could go by just doing very timbral stuff is still within like the 2K world as fundamental, much lower than that, maybe 1K even. So it's quite dark-ish instrument. The dynamic is very much bigger than any instrument except the grand piano and electric instruments in general because of the proximity and the way it's built. And no acoustic instrument has this wide range of dynamic. So if you take a corpus of bell sounds like I just used, the bell sounds are always all normalized, very sharp transient, usually very no fundamental in my little bells. Uh, the fundamental, the lowest, will be about 500. So you can see there's a problem of mismatching of space of different zones that I occupy within the descriptor possibilities. If the pitch descriptor goes from 20 to 20k, the bass will use the first half, and if I play like, like very high pitch uh, glockenspiel, it will use the second half, and there will never be any pitch matching. So. The first thing I did in FTM, and that's where it, comes, it becomes quite clever, uh, is, is to do a mapping system. Now I'll open the patch for you, it's the last minute. So to see the whole patch, you need to make it like this. Now why is it that messy? It's because I kept stuff together. It's not that messy. Now to talk about cathart structure, cathart is dealing with all the grain analysis, all the grain replacement, everything. If you follow the examples, you will see that there are only three objects needed. You've got cathart in it, which will in it the whole stuff. It's a very complex patch, very well done by DMO. Thank you, DMO. And then you've got a cathart analysis object, and then you've got a cathart player object, and off you go. You're sorted. You can create, and then you go to cathode corpus object. So you create your corpus, you either import, load, whatever, you do the analysis, and then poof, you spit it out. It's very, very simple. What's not simple is when you start to mess around like I did. To do the um, mapping, there's even an example in uh, cathode distribution showing you how to do the um, mosaicing. But when you want to, to do mosaicing, there's a key word. I'll show you where it's done. I'll try to find it first. Here we go. So, it's here. You set cathart select to select a given grain descriptor list. Now, because it's outside of the world, you can decide to take that. It's a simple FTM 
matrix, that set of descriptors. So what you could do is to take that set of descriptor and map it. Now this is zeros and one because I don't do any mapping. But if I turn one mapping on, like this for instance, you saw that value here change in the FTM F mat. It's a matrix. Do, does anyone know FTM a little? Okay. FTM is like jitter on steroids. I prefer I prefer FTM to jitter now after doing done done both because A it's free. <laughs> B it works. No no seriously, they do they do about the same thing. Jitter has a video angle. You can do other things, crazy things with jitter. FTM has an audio analysis slash audio synthesis slash granulation angle. There's no better granulation tool than the Gabor suit of objects ever. Ever. Uh, he will disagree. But it's okay. I, I'm open to questions after. But the precision you get, the, the handling of the memory is, is done very elegantly. So this is just a matrix a la jitter with a lot of little difference that pisses you off when you start FTM when you know jitter. But it, you get through it. It's worth it. The examples are again not as good as the jitter L files because they're amazing. So I would say for, if you don't know Jitter or FTM, learn F Jitter with the Jitter tutorials. And when you're used to thinking in matrices, switch to FTM, beat yourself for about two weeks, and you'll be sorted. So that would be the way to learn FTM. Uh, sorry, Norbert. Uh, um, so when I click here, when I click a given, a given parameter and I ask him to map it, what it actually does in FTM is to go fetch the maximum and minimum of the descriptors of that grain in both corpora and map them on a linear basis. It's very dirty, but it helps. So if my instrument set is very not noisy, like a bass, compared to a drum collection, which is very noisy on the other side, I will take the, the extremes of the parameter noisiness in both corpus and map them. And that sounds like this, for instance. Uh, that's a bit messy now. Uh, one and presentation. <sighs> uh, so uh, I'm mapping the wrong one now, but if I map loudness is another good example. You know, if you're, all your, your samples are within the same range of amplitude and the bass is super dynamic, you might lose. You might gain, you might lose. It's dangerous because if you map it and then this, you have no, you have too much of a dynamic range. So it's something to explore with. But like periodicity, for instance. It's a bit more realistic on, on my performing scale. Anyway, so, um, really dirty the way I like it. So, as you can see, that was the first problem. And to be able to understand the structure in FTM and to do the little math, you know, to do like a linear mapping, you know, delta x under delta y gives you m and uh, y equals m x plus b. You know, it's like algebra from, from third, third high school, third grade or something like this. But just to do that in the matrix, in the parallel, and to make it work in FTM, took me some time because you can do that in Jitter with JIT XPR which is again like rocket science like to understand the syntax of JIT EXPR is just pissing me off every time I go back to it it's just like come on guys you could have done it simply but it's just like so well, badly explained anyway um, another FTM thing is that the stream of grains is stream of FTM descriptors as you just saw I can manipulate it mathematically and I can use the FTM sequencer object, which will just sequence it with time tags. And this is just a sequence I do up here. And then I can go play parts of that sequence. If it's still in there, yes, it is. Yeah, it's good. But because it is a control sequence, Corpus. 
I get mad the parameters differently till I get another result. And then I can play with like very organic variations of a little loop. Theme and variation at the tip of your fingers. Okay, I've said enough. I think you understand that playing the thing is to play, to have fun. I play, I have fun. Understanding FTM was a key element. Cat art is freely available. It, if you want to try it, don't hesitate to go on and send me emails because I've just, give, I've just been through it. The learning curve is, could be steep, depending how good you are with abstract. But I'll just show you an example of, of how it's coded to finish the final thing. DMO is a very clever person. So what he does is object-orientated max MSP. He does send and receives within each of his patch. The green things are send and receive. And he does a patcher, object, a patcher message management at the top with the name of the receive being the, the function or the method you call. So just to get that is already something. But you can see by just opening a patch, all the messages that Qatar.data would give you. You've got proxy to fetch that data. You've got this, you've got that, you've got, and you can access all that. But to get your head around that, I would say he's a clever man. He's a clever man. And it's probably the best way I've seen Max coded that is, makes it almost a real programming language. You know, I've done C enough to understand that. But it, I would say, don't be afraid if you hit a wall there. Dig deeper, it's worth it. And you can make magnificent stuff with Qatar. Any question? What's the uh, control stream and how does it, what, what's it recording? Is it recording audio or is it analyzing the audio? And it's, it's, you missed that beginning. The, uh, the, the audio stream is exactly the same thing as the analysis that is done in non-real time. It's an analysis done. In that case, I've decided to do grain of fixed size for both, for the synthesis, the corpus that is pre-analyzed and played and for the stream, the live stream of audio that Same comes thing happens. and so it's analyzed okay. the same way on the same set of parameters and it's mapped according to the weight of the parameters or the different controllers or uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, I'm tired now. Uh, the name of the descriptors I've chosen here. So it's, it's one corpus of what you've recorded live? Against. No. No. It's the it's a corp it's not yeah yes it is a corpus of what it's doing a hidden corpus of what I'm playing, but that corpus doesn't then map to the sounds that you want and it's mapped according to the weight of the different uh, uh, descriptors that are there. If you're recording into a corpus live, yeah. If you have, if you add a pitch value and it's higher than what you've already had or something like that, does that change the the range a bit? You were saying about yeah yeah. If you play in Qatar and you do live recording into Qatar. You see the whole world is filling itself with like loves lovely lovely different different points. All the different grains are, appears in your world and you can start to play them in real time. I'm not interested to do that because I play bass, but that's what yeah. DMO Schwartz. DMO Schwartz play with Qatar all the time live. And he, he the first time I met DMO we did a duet. He, I was playing the bass, he was playing the concatenator. And then he, he was sampling me and then sorting the grains in time so you could play a full sentence of me by just going in the past and then doing something like this and then otherwise he was just filtering in in, in, in other musical parameters that make more sense like grain what uh, that are similar together according to certain descriptor like pitch for instance and, and and brightness and he was able to play an instrument that is much more musical for him to create a counterpoint yeah. of bass granulated and that that's what he does and you see the world is filling itself with wonderful little elements. When you look at it in the XY yeah. thing, if you add something, that's, does it show the whole range of what's possible? Yeah, yeah, three maps. Three maps every, I think, four times a second. Okay. And it's doing everything you want to do, uh, <laughs> exactly. And you've got a DX7 t-shirt, that's cool. <laughs> okay, any other question? <coughs> yeah. Can you map, say, the pitch of, what, of your live stream to the loudness of the corpus, or is it always... That's a very interesting question. No, you can't, and no, you don't want. I've, uh, in sandbox number two, you can do that. And 
the first thing that you see in the literature on meta instruments is that nonlinear mapping of non an instrument that are not you have three types of mapping wonderly worth an amazing paper on that like people who do experiment new interface think a lot about these problems but non-linear mapping mapping a it's not linear it's not non-coherent mapping it, it they, they, nobody everyone complains it's, it's fun at the beginning, ah, and then you get bored yeah, because there's no control. Even there, because my world is not full, the control is limited. Even if the mapping is 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 to what I'm used to on my instrument. Imagine if loudness was fast. It it is more a chaos engine. It works kind of cutely, uh, but it's not super sexy. When you say in, in, in this you could in Qatar you, have oh, in Qatar you could because what, you if have you just have to s you just to swap the values, it's quite easy to do actually with the matrix in an F map to swap two values. The great thing about about FTM again is the code language. If you know how to code a proper language like C, uh, you will be able to do in one FTM message box a lot of stuff like taking values for a given place copy them, multiply them, send them, shovel them, score, sort them, whatever, within one message box and send that in another matrix or in place, do that in the same place, save memory allocation and stuff. It's very, very, very intelligent. It's made by engineers who do that, extend maximum speed in the real world. It's very really good. Yeah? Um, so you took your sounds in to make the and when it does the analysis, the grains, are they, does it make a copy of all of audio? Or is it like, mm, kind of well, that's, that's a good question. Files? Catart will, when you save your analysis, it doesn't save the audio, it saves the analysis. So yeah. when you... In the uh, audio sculpt mindset. So you've got the analysis and the audio file is saved as a reference, a pointer to that sound file. Which is, could be a pain if you're not disciplined, you can use the audio file. But if you're disciplined, it's not a problem. And it doesn't copy uselessly on your hard drive space. So, and my analysis in that case, my corpus have been analyze, analyzed uh, with grain, fixed grain size of 150 milliseconds. That was my a guess. And therefore, when I play with a stream of replacement grain at 30 milliseconds per grain, I've got an overlap of about five, which makes it sound a bit smoother. Here we go. That's my approach. Uh, I will continue to explore with these parameters. The mapping, the, the parameters of, of, of synthesis are very, very important mm -hmm. and of analysis before. So you have to explore with that. Each corpus probably needs a different set of analysis parameters anyway. So with experience, you know how to analyze your corpus. Any other question? Lovely. Next. Are you next? Uh, okay. Oh, no, come on. It's, 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 it's,